Hello everyone. In the last session, we will discuss about the introduction of the synchronous machine, synchronous motor, and speed regulation. So how the torque and power will be acting depends on the speed. Now we will discuss what are the applications of the synchronous motor. The first, first application is for large power and low head applications. That means large power means power value is high. Power value is high and low head applications. Low head applications means, uh, but it has very less head, less head, less amount of, suppose it will be acting as a motor, which will be from the water, from the water from this. So it has only low head. It has only less height compared with the other machines. Next, second applications, compressions. So it will be worked as compressors. So it will be useful in compressors also. Okay. Next point, reciprocating pumps. So re reciprocating pumps also, it has very good applications. Right. Next, steel mills and rolling mills. So to make the steel, it will be useful rolling mills. Next, induced and draft pans. Induced fans and draft fans. Draft fans, these are the fans. Induced fans means uh, it will be uh, take the air from the outside and shift into the room. This will be induced. Next, draft pan is also. So the air from that taken into outside, draft fan. Next, crushes and blowers. So crushes and blowers also very, very important applications. Next, synchronous condenser. Synchronous condenser means it's a very good application. So it will be very, very useful. And you know that synchronous condenser is power factor to control the power factor, to control the power factor and to control the reactive power. So it will be useful for supplying the reactive power and receiving the reactive power receiving the reactive power next next we will discuss about the advantages advantages of the synchronous motor first advantage look at here for large power low speed applications so from this it will be useful it will take the more power and speed will be the low okay Synchronous motors are cheaper and smaller in size compared with the induction motor. So if you take the induction motor, it will be somewhat cheaper as well as cheaper and small size. It has a less size only, small size only. Next, next advantage, constant speed. You know that the speed is always the synchronous speed. This is the constant speed. Next. Power factor can be controlled only one motor which can be power factor controlled motor. So here is the cos pi is controllable. Cos pi is the controllable. So only one motor the power factor can control. Next it has the high efficiency. So efficiency value is very high compared with the remaining motors. Okay, these are the different different advantages of the synchronous motor. Next, disadvantage. The first disadvantage is it is not a self-starting motor. So most important thing, synchronous motor is not self-starting. Doesn't have the self-starting. So it should require some auxiliary power. Next, starting torque is zero. The another thing is the starting torque is zero, but developing good running torque. So most important thing is the starting torque will be zero, but the running torque is good. This will be somewhat better. Next third point. The third thing is it required separate field excitation. You know that. So for synchronous machine. We require the separate field excitation. This is like this. Separate field excitation. You know that. Right? These are the different different disadvantages for the synchronous motor. Next. 
So here, so here we have the synchronous motor. Just we have a small comparison with synchronous motor and induction motor. Just look at here. Synchronous motor rating is, for example, 100 megawatts. It will rotate only 300 RP. If the same rating with induction motor is available, it is having 100 megawatt. It will rotate with the 1000 RP. It will rotate with the 1000 RP. So compare with the these two things, the, always the induction motor is the preferable. Compare with the synchronous motor. Induction motor is the preferable. Compare with the synchronous motor. Okay. Next. Next, we will discuss the torque production in the synchronous motor. So, how the torque production will be done in the synchronous motor? Just look at here. We are giving some supply. The inch, the poles are, for example, the data poles are moving like this, and rotor should follow the poles like this. Yes. Okay. The The torque is the torque should be like this. So generally EMF is like this. Next, in the second case, the stator poles are interchanged. So due to the synchronous speed, so south pole entering here, north pole is entering here. Then, then the next case the generated EMF will be, the given EMF supply will be negative. Supply will be negative means the poles are interchanged. Supply will be positive means poles are like this. Okay. But just observe here, the torque generated by these two conditions will be zero. So at this position, first position for this supply, second position for this supply, the electromagnetic torque production is the zero. Electromagnetic torque production is the zero. Why? We have to discuss here. Just look at here. The relative motion between the stator MMF and rotor RF MMF is the synchronous speed. Initially, in order to produce unidirectional torque, torque should be in unidirectional, right? Unidirectional torque. The relative speed between between the stator MMF and rotor MMF is zero. So we have the MMF for stator and MMF for rotor. Two are available. MMF for stator and MMF for rotor. Two is available. So for this, for this, you have to produce both stator MMF as well as rotor MMF must be zero. So that's why we require some unidirectional torque. We require some unidirectional torque. Right. What is another problem? Due to the inertia, it doesn't rotate. So generally the synchronous motor having the inertia, that's why it doesn't rotate. So synchronous motor can be started by applying an external force. So initially, this is the rotor for example. Due to inertia, it will not rotate. But we are applying some external force, external force to overcome this mechanical ratio. It has some mechanical ratio. Okay. Rotor has driven to synchronous speed. From this, rotor has driven to synchronous speed. So by applying this, it will driven to the synchronous speed. So that inertia reduces. So from this case, whenever it rotates with the synchronous speed. Inertia will be reduces when excitation is given, then rotate with the synchronous speed. When excitation is applied, then the rotor will rotate with the synchronous speed. Rotor will rotate with the synchronous speed. Right. So by these conditions, by these conditions, we have to require, we have to give some, these are the some disadvantages of the synchronous motor. That is the disadvantage is it is not possible to produce the unidirectional torque. So that's why we require some external force. That is a disadvantage. And we have to eliminate the inertia 
is a disadvantage so for this we require some auxiliary some auxiliary production is required for the system for the synchronous motor otherwise it will not rotates otherwise it will not rotates okay so these are the applications advantages disadvantages and torque production of the synchronous motor i hope all of you understand the session thank you